Hi everybody, this is Rishi Agarwal and this is going to be a video about endotracheal tubes and what they look like on chest radiographs. This is what the ET tube looks like outside of the patient. The tip has this beveled edge. Just proximal to the tip is the ET tube cuff, which is inflated to hold the ET tube in place. And it has this radiopaque marker down the center of it to help you see it better. The tip should be three to seven centimeters above the carina. If it's too high, the cuff could damage the vocal cords or the patients can self-extubate. If it's too low, there's a chance that the tip could go into the right main stem bronchus and the left lung wouldn't get any air. So it's important to remember that the hose goes with the nose, which means that if the patient flexes their neck and the chin goes down, then the ET tube is gonna go down with it. And when the patient extends their neck and the chin goes up, then the ET tube is gonna go up. So the ET tube has approximately two centimeters of travel because of this flexion and extension phenomenon. This is what the ET tube looks like inside of the patient. So this is the beveled edge of the tip of the tube, and this is the radiopaque marker going down the center of it. This is the carina right here, and this is a patient who it's easy to find the carina. But in general, if you look at the aortic arch, kind of the bottom of the aortic arch, if you look just medial to that is where the carina will be. So we'll look at some more examples of that. But if I were to measure this one, I would uh, take my uh, measurement tool and go from here to here. And whatever that number is, is what I would report. When you're evaluating patients with ET tubes, the first thing you want to do, even before you measure how far the tip is from the carina, is to make sure that the ET tube is in the trachea. So rarely, not often, but rarely, especially if the patient is intubated in the field and not in the hospital, the ET tube can go into the esophagus, which is what has happened in this patient. So the trachea is right here, and the, the esophagus is just to the left of that. So another sign that the ET tube is in the esophagus and not in the trachea is that the gastric bubble is distended in this patient. So this is an esophageal intubation. So step one is to always make sure that the ET tube is in the trachea and not in the esophagus. So after you've established that the ET tube is in the trachea, the next thing you want to do is measure the tip of the tube to the carina. So in this patient, the tip of the tube is all the way up here. So it's just above the thoracic inlet and the carina is here. So I would measure from here to here. But in this case, you know, if it's this high, you almost don't need to measure it because you know that it's too high and then you need to call the team to tell them to advance the tube. Okay, so step two is measure the tip of the tube to the carina. The third thing you want to do is keep an eye on the patient's chin. So in this example, the chin is outside the field of view, so the neck is either in neutral position or it's in extension, and the ET tube is right above the carina. So we know that if the patient flexes their neck and the chin goes down, then the ET tube will go into the right main bronchus. And that is what has happened in this patient. So on the subsequent chest x-ray, the patient flexed their neck. You could see now the chin is in the field of view, and the ET tube is now right at the ostium of the right main stem bronchus. So let's look at a few examples. This is a patient who was intubated in the ED, and you could see that the ET tube is too far down. It's in the right main stem bronchus here. And if you have trouble finding the carina, then it's really important to uh, decrease the brightness and increase the contrast of the image to help see those structures. And when we do that, we can see the carina is right here, and this is really right into the right main stem bronchus. Here's another patient that was intubated, and the ET tube went into the right main stem bronchus. And you can see, as a result, the whole left lung has collapsed. This is the chest x-ray uh, immediately prior to intubation, and this is right after intubation. So the ET tube went into the right main stem bronchus and collapsed the left lung because it's not getting any air. If you have any questions about this topic, please feel free to email me or you can leave a comment on this video. I would also recommend reading chapter nine of the Thoracic Imaging Requisites series, which is all about lines and tubes. And it covers not just ET tubes, but tracheostomy tubes, as well as all sorts of uh, vascular lines. Thank you.